Hi, this is Charles Hoskinson broadcasting live from warm, sunny Colorado. Always warm, always sunny. Sometimes Colorado. Quite windy today. Excel had to turn off power lines just so that they didn't get blown down and burn everything to the ground. Today is April 7th, 2024, and making a video to talk about Hydra, our good friends Hydra. In particular, uh, about a lot of FUD that's been spreading around, and I'm not sure the origins of it. In fact, I've noticed lately that there's been a humongous amount of lies and disinformation uh, and just bizarre, absolutely bizarre, uh, misleading that's, uh, that's floating around. So if you actually take a look, here's a tweet, well-intended one. He says, what's all this fun I hear about Hydra potentially having been scra uh, scrapped behind the scenes? Sure, I'm, uh, I'm having difficulty finding recent talks about it, but it seems like a stretch. What's the real picture? So source of truth has always been the same, Hydra.family. This is the official website of the Hydra pro uh, uh, product. You take a look at uh, the GitHub repo. You know, things are moving very quickly. You know, commits just a few days ago. Uh, you know, tons of development work happening. 39 contributors. It continues to grow as a project. Uh, and uh, there's been 19 tagged releases. The last release was actually just four days ago, 0.16.0. You can take a look at all the different things going on. All the breaking changes, new contributors. Pretty exciting, actually, when you take a look at it. And you come down and take a look at some of the features. We've gotten through all of the initial features. And now we're starting to work on the really sexy, interesting features, like incremental decommit and commit optimistic head closures, modular API, automated handling rollbacks, relay capable, mesh network, multiple heads. And there's a full roadmap here. So this was what was there and that's what they're working on now. So they're slowly chipping away at it. And in general, when you take a look, there's 209 research papers that have now been published at, uh, through all the different labs working on Cardano. For some reason, none of this means anything anybody in the Twitters, because what people are saying is they just straight up lie. They say quietly scrap behind the scenes. There's never been more progress and more ambition and more excitement behind an example project that we have in Cardano, and it's completely open and fully transparent, and it's truly community driven. There's, there's our engineers, but there's also the CFs engineers, and there's a lot of community participation. And there's a lot of discussions about next generation Hydra protocols. And we've learned an enormous amount about how to run Hydra in Cardano and the kinds of things that we need to do uh, to get Hydra where it needs to go as an ecosystem. So you start with formal research papers and then you go and start doing translational research. Then you create good places for people to aggregate. Uh, and then you actually start implementing it in the general public. This is how all really good open source research driven projects uh, work. And then people take this and you'll notice that some of the contributors are members of the community um, who have projects in the community, whether it be Sunday Swap or otherwise. Uh, and you take that and they integrate that into their, uh, their software that's being built on Cardano. But then this guy here, he says, I'm hearing behind the scenes, it's been scrapped, what's going on? It's because for some reason right now, there's a lot of lies that are being spread. Like for example, that Chang is uh, delayed or governance is not coming to Cardano. Well, here's the formal specification for everything that comes with a governance hard fork written in Agda. There is no higher standard in computer science. And you can see many different institutions. So Cuvic contributed with a whole bunch of our researchers. And it's actually a peer reviewed paper that's gonna be appearing at a, uh, at a workshop here in just a moment. It's uh, right here to appear at FMBC. Okay, so there you go. And this actually talks about how to specify the Cardano blockchain in Agda. Once it's specified here, you can extract code and then prove properties of it. So this is the highest standard you could do in software engineering uh, in uh, protocol design is to actually write things in a, uh, in a formal language like Agda and you can prove tons of properties of it. And we felt it was very important to do this because this is voting. Okay, so the entire design is formalized to the extent that it can be in a peer-reviewed paper. And 
you see right here, we have outlined the mechanized specification of the extended UTXO based ledger rules of the Cardano blockchain by taking bird's eye view of the hierarchy of uh, transitions handling different subcomponents in a modular way. Although space limitations preclude us from exhaustively fleshing out all the gory details, those gory details, by the way, are actually in our GitHub repo over at Intersec, we hope to have conveyed uh, the general design principles that will be helpful to others when attempting to mechanize something of this kind and at this scale. By the way, scale, this is the first time in human history that a cryptocurrency has been formalized at this scale. It's an exceedingly complicated thing to do. We did it. In the little space we could afford for more thorough details, we have made a conscious choice of putting emphasis on the most novel aspects of the current era of the Cardano blockchain, decentralized governance. There, the introduction of these notions of voting ratification and enactment complicate the ledger rules of previous eras a bit in a fairly orthogonal way, meaning that it introduced a lot of risk and complexity to Cardano. So you know what we did? We designed the entire paper. A mechanized formal artifact of this kind is rigid enough to eliminate any ambiguity that would often arise in a pen and paper specification. Absolutely true. There could be tons of bugs or issues that are uh, pushed into Cardano, but we basically wrote a paper to demonstrate that that's not the case, and the paper matches a machine understandable specification, meaning that this actually runs in code because it's written in Agda. But you know, the broader point is that that's how we do things in Cardano land. It's not new. You guys know about it. You see it, and it's not hidden. It lives in a public artifact, whether it be through the conferences, the papers, the GitHub repositories, or the code running on your computer. Cardano is one of the largest formal methods bearing open source projects in the world. Um, and it's a marvel of computer science. And a lot of amazing things have been learned and uh, derived. But then you go to Twitter and you go to Reddit, you go to YouTube, you go to all these carnival barking podcasters. And what they say is they say it's a dead project. No one's using it, that it can't scale. Nothing has been delivered. All the projects are secretly canceled. Nothing is being done. It's, ex it's, it's, it's like living in two parallel realities. It's like you're building this beautiful city. You're making all this progress. And then you have somebody saying the city doesn't exist. Not that it's not going to be a good city to live in, or maybe it's not their city, or maybe the city's too far from the coast or whatever have you. No, they say, they physically say the city does not exist. It's all a lie. I'm not exactly sure the origins of this. Um, it's gone beyond good faith misunderstanding of marketing failures or Dunning-Kruger or these other things. I think there is a malicious intent behind some of the rumors that are being spread through uh, because they're pervasive, they're consistent, and also they ignore any attempt to dissuade. If there's good faith effort, if you come to me and say, I don't think this project is exists or I'm hearing troubling rumors about it, well, we would resolve that by just showing you the evidence. For example, I just showed you the GitHub repository, showed you that it's actively being committed to, there's external contributors, there's a roadmap, the roadmap is being executed, progress is being made, every step, it adds new capabilities to the system, and there's a deep R&D pipeline that continues to add these capabilities. Most normal people would say, oh, okay, well, when do I get something that's useful for this type of application? Poker, blackjack, decentralized exchange, what, whatever have you. Then we can have a conversation about what capabilities would be required, when in the roadmap would such a thing be possible, and the types of benefits you'd get from it. You show all this evidence to the people purveying this misinformation, and they say none of that exists. It's all a lie. It's all a misunderstanding. It's uh, and, and when you get to that point, it's almost like politics. And it feels a little bit disingenuous. It feels like people are actually going out of their way to lie. The other thing is people are starting to lie with numbers. For example, we see, oh, Solana has 11,000 times more transactions. Well, they never mention like 90% plus of all the transactions, the system are related to consensus overhead or other such things that have nothing to do with economic activity. Yes, there is a higher TVL, but then there was also an enormous pre-mine. And what, that's just all sitting in accounts. It's not being utilized and deployed into the system. I want people to actually believe that. Okay, it's the same for a lot of these BC back coins. They gave themselves big allotments of cryptocurrency and they take it and they put it into their TVL. 
and they generate yield from that, then they have their own market makers and their own people doing things to create basically economic activity. Make profits, then they reinvest those profits into astroturfing adoption. Sure, we could take half the market cap of Cardano and take $10 billion and mint it in ADA or something and put it into TVL, and then we'd have the, one of the highest TVLs in the entire ecosystem. There you go. It's not really a reflection of organic growth, now, is it? Meanwhile, Cardano's had enormous organic growth, and not only is it ignored, in many cases they leave it off of the indices. That's where it gets really confusing to me, where you actually have positive numbers. You go to the indexes that track these things, and you say, why is Cardano not listed? Well, we don't list Cardano. Well, but, but why? You just saw Gemini today. They say, tell us your favorite cryptocurrency, not you ADA people. Okay, so why ask the question then? Why are we excluded from even participating? Polls come out and they leave all the Cardano projects off. You're not even allowed to vote on them. It's not whether we win or lose, or it's a good poll or a bad poll, a fair election, not a fair election. You're not even allowed to vote in many cases for these things. We're left off the list. So there's something there, and maybe it's fear, because what I just showed you is not a trivial thing. It is one of the most difficult, high entropy, and, and incredibly expensive and time-consuming things a person can do in any software project, and it cannot be replicated by three Silicon Valley co college dropout kids, high school dropout kids sitting in their mom's basement, hacking something together with Ruby and TypeScript. It requires people who have dedicated their lives to becoming craftsmen of software and formalization. And it requires enormous amounts of domain expertise. It's like the neurosurgery level of stuff. It's post PhD, even with a PhD in computer science, most people don't do this because it's so specialized and so unique. However, what it does produce is clarity and certainty and a beautiful roadmap that speeds up over time because you've proven all the guardrails and the boundaries of things. The Cardano governance upgrade is the largest in the history of the cryptocurrency space for any cryptocurrency to do this. It's pretty crazy. And the fact that so many different pieces from so many different actors had to come together from dozens of workshops being held around the world to over two years of discussions and a SIP uh, to a formal specification and agnet worthy of a peer review process because it was so intricate. Uh, to the Sancho net, all the testing there, to the gov tool that sits on top. And that's just one of a half dozen innovations that are currently being developed in parallel uh, with Cardano. Hydras and then the Mithril's and the partner chains framework, including partner chains like Midnight. You got enormous amounts of work happening with Ouroboros Leos and Paris, these types of things. So you have all these different work streams that are occurring simultaneously in addition to this gargantuan program of decentralized governance, the ecosystem is sustainably doing this with principles at scale every day and pushing it through. None of that is reflected in any of the comments of the crypto media, the indexes that leave us off, the carnival barking YouTubers uh, or the Twitterati. Because it's not about that. It's not about progress. It's not about utility. It's not about actually building something that's going to be here for 10 years or 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. It is about short-term value appreciation so that people can dump on retail and run away. Otherwise, why wouldn't they care about the things we care about? Why wouldn't they care about decentralization? Why wouldn't they care about semantical correctness? Why wouldn't they care about building a decentralized brain? through the peer review process so that you always have innovation coming down the pipe? Why wouldn't they care about effective governance of the project that's inclusive and it brings people together and gives everybody a say? Why wouldn't they care about things like transaction determinism, the ability to validate things locally that are true globally or how the system is gonna interact with all the other blockchain systems? and legacy systems? Why wouldn't they care about self-sovereign identity, integrate these things together? 
and use it for regulated value transfer and selective disclosure and other such things, which is required for the legacy world and real world assets. Why would they care about these things? They say they care, but then when people actually go and do them and make meaningful and significant progress on them, seldom does that even get mentioned and instead its number go up because that's the game they play. They say there's a bull market. Everybody's getting a little nervous and shaky because they know that these things come every three to four years as a direct consequence of the halving. And they see the path to $150,000, $200,000 Bitcoin. They see the path to it. They say, okay, and they do some number crunching and there's rising tides with everybody else. And they say, I got to get launched by that time period. I got to get out there by that time period so I can get the big surge and get an EOS style dump. Make a boatload of money. That's what they want. And I guess if that's the game you're playing, every action does make sense. But you can't let other actors into that conversation because it short circuits your master plan. You can't let an ecosystem like ours play that game because then your users start asking for things you can't provide. They start asking for decentralization. They start asking for the receipts on how you know your protocols work. They start asking for formal methods to be applied. They start asking for decentralized governance and having a seat at the table. They start asking about your 50% pre-mine or 60% pre-mine or other such things. They start asking about this type of stuff and you have no real discussion about how that's going to be used, where it's going to be used, these types of things. And so you can't let a Cardano in that doesn't have the VCs and has this incredible decentralized growth and its mere existence is a counterexample to every single thing they tell you of what you're supposed to do to be successful in the space. And then they just straight up lie. Hydra has been canceled. Midnight is replacing Cardano and input outputs leaving the ecosystem. There's no, no trans, 0.4 transactions per second. Just lie after lie after lie after lie after lie after lie after lie down the block. And then they propagate these lies and they put them into their echo chambers. Nobody listens because no one actually hears the source material. They just get the material of the material of the material of the material. And the original argument is completely lost. In it. But, you know, it doesn't impact a roadmap. It doesn't impact the direction of Cardano. It doesn't impact the work that we do. It doesn't impact the vision behind it. It doesn't impact the fact that we've achieved so much already. We went from nothing to a huge ecosystem in a period of just seven years with the engine knowing itself. It's not going to deviate or change and the funding is there thanks to the system itself to continue this indefinitely. Year after year, it'll get stronger, faster, better, more capable, and never once compromise its principles or integrity. That's something worthwhile. And I think a lot of people see that. And a lot of people are terrified of that because they can't compete with it. It's just dismaying, although, you know, and uh, it is quite toxic at times. And it gets deeply frustrating. You know, a lot of people prescribe how I should act and think and how I should feel and what I should do as a leader. Um, and it's hard at times to partner with certain people who you know behind the scenes are doing dirty tricks to hurt your work and your projects, actively trying to prevent liquidity, actively trying to prevent uh, growth, poisoning the well for projects in Cardano that are seeking venture capital. It's not my ego that makes me so angry when people criticize. It's quite mellow these days, guys. It's when those people go out of their way to hurt Cardano projects. It could be as simple as an investor in a Cardano project saying, you should leave the Cardano blockchain and come to our blockchain or else we'll punish you, which has happened for certain Cardano projects. I won't name names, but you know who you are and uh, you know what you've done. And you see these things and it's hard not to get angry because every person here signed up for the dream. They want something with principles and integrity. They want to have a say in how their infrastructure runs and the infrastructure is running. 
And it's not getting in the way, for the most part, of them being able to build and make progress. What you're doing is you're taking a community that loves peace, and you're telling them that unless they leave, they're going to be punished and hurt. That's what gets me angry. And I see a lot of it these days. Uh, and it's tough. I also see us not getting a fair shake out of certain major industry players with things like, for example, stable coins. So just got to solve it ourselves as an ecosystem. And we will because we solve every problem as an ecosystem. There's an inevitability behind it. As people bark and complain and cry and all these problems, they don't for a moment realize that overall any time horizon, if you give us enough time in Cardano land, we fix it and we figure it out. When Shelley, when Gogan, when Coinbase, when this, when this, when this, when this. It always eventually comes. The community figures it out. The ecosystem figures it out. It takes a little bit of time. And if you tell me that everything has to be solved in 12 months or else we're dead, and Cardano is a failed project, and all the people who leave, who believe in principles and integrity, where will they go? Where will they go? What other system are they going to go to? A system where the founders have absolute power forever? A system that shuts itself down and has to be manually rebooted again and again? A system that doesn't do anything? Just judges everybody else? Where will they go? Honestly. Can't answer that question because all you can do is just carnival bark about price. So we're here to stay, whether the industry likes it or not. And we're going to keep building whether the industry likes it or not. And I guess we're now in the age of dishonesty where there's lie after lie after lie after lie. And, you know, we'll just fight the lies too. And we'll win there. And it makes us stronger. I'm proud of the things that have been done. 209 papers is, is not just a buzzword. It's a lot of hard work for everybody. And it's even harder work taking those papers and translating them into actual code that runs in a protocol at scale, which requires the minds of hundreds, if not thousands of people around the world, many different companies, many different efforts, coordinating in a decentralized way with decentralized tools Every single day waking up with that dream, they wouldn't do it if it was all for nothing. They wouldn't do it if it was some sort of elaborate scam. It doesn't make any sense. And for seven goddamn years, they've been doing it. At what point do we get some damn credit? But we won't because it's a different game. We told everybody from day one, this is the game. And then for some reason, everybody else wants to play that game over there. And because we're not playing the same games, we're talking past each other and no value can be derived. You know, um, that's the industry as a whole. It's very demoralizing if you spend too much time in, uh, in that industry. And I can't imagine how complicated and crazy it would be for a newbie coming in in 2024, their lived experience. You come in through Bitcoin. Oh, I heard of Bitcoin. I want to use Bitcoin. Then all of a sudden you have the cult of Maxis and Max Kaiser and all these people writing these crazy things. And then suddenly you see Ethereum and you say, well, that's interesting. And you go over there and then the Solana people come in and, and they tell you that you're just a horrible human being for being on Ethereum. Then you go to Solana and then all these other people say, what are you doing? That's a terrible thing. And you get pulled and tugged in all these different directions. And then you say, well, what about the first principles? And they say, what first principles? Well, what about decentralization? Well, do we have a definition of it? Well, how about the EDI? No, you can't like the EDI. That's a Cardano thing. It must be bad because they created it. Yeah, but they wrote a paper and they have all these things taught. Oh, no, no, no. It's got to be bad and evil. Cardano's evil. But why is Cardano? Charles Hoskins, it's evil. Here, read this. Yeah, but what about Cardano? I believe in decentralization. I believe in these things. They seem to be saying, oh, you're just a normie. It's the normie chain. They're a cult. They mislead people. That's the lived experience of a person entering our industry in 2024. Honestly, is this going to conquer the world? Really? 
And what they never tell you is that the people actually running the show are not the layer ones, are not the scientists, are not the engineers, are not the token issuers. It's a small club of infrastructure providers, like the centralized exchanges, the stablecoin issuers, and a lot of the people in between. It's a small club. They control who gets liquidity. They control the prices on the market. They control what's a legitimate project versus not a legitimate project. They control which a DeFi gets blown up and which ones don't. And then there's a smaller group of people that enable them on the media side. And they basically say, ah, oh, well, everything these guys do is the legit stuff and everything else is not legitimate. I cannot for the life of me understand why Ergo is not in the top 15, top 20 with what it's accomplished and what they've done. Doesn't matter. They don't get liquidity. Don't know why. I really don't especially given all the other stuff that gets it. And then when you try, they rake you over the coals. Some projects were told they have to fork over 7% of their supply to get listed on a tier two exchange. 7% forever of the entire distribution to get listed on an exchange. Not even to get market making or guarantee price, just to get market access. Don't fucking tell me that's not usurious. The people who come in, they don't see or understand any of this. They're just told coin market cap is the only source of truth in the entire ecosystem. That is what we must look to. And everything else doesn't matter. There you go. It's a sad state of affairs, which is why we try to stay above all of it. You know, we try to stay out of all of it. And normally it works. But lately, because so many people are lying and saying things, it's just materially false and misleading. You have to then fight back. And then when you fight back, people play the victim. Oh, you're so toxic. Oh, I can't believe you've said that. Oh, see, you're not mature. You're not a leader. When we see a poll, for whatever reason, it's being syndicated by one of the core entities of Cardano. Not sure why they syndicated it, which created legitimacy for it, that is not fair, that has left off some of the best entrepreneurs in our industry and also left off Cardano projects. You are not even allowed to vote on. Yes, it is absolutely reasonable to say there's a problem there, but then we have a maturity problem. Twitter is not reality, people. Grow the fuck up. You know what's reality? Reality is why this industry exists in the first place. It exists because we spend too much, we do too much, and we take care of too few as a financial industry and a governance industry. This industry was built on the back of the 2008 financial crisis. Look at me in the face and tell me that the world financial system is healthier today in 2024 than it was in 2008, and that we live in a more peaceful world today than we live in 2008. The fiat currencies of the world are dying. You can't point to a single country and say everything is beautiful there. And the central banks are doing a phenomenal job. Inflation is low. People are able to save. People make more than they spend. Every generation is enjoying an enhanced lifestyle over the prior generation. You can't point to them ubiquitously. Things are getting worse because of governance problems and a dying financial system. And this is why our industry exists. Otherwise, it has no purpose other than to enrich the legacy people and do yet another wealth transfer from the small and medium-sized businesses and individuals to the rich. We just got done with COVID with the largest wealth transfer in American history from the poor to the rich. You know what's happening is all the tentacles are coming into our industry and they're planning to do it again and have a large wealth transfer from the poor retail people to large companies again. And they'll tell you what they've always told you, it's your fault. I didn't sign up for that. This industry doesn't exist for that reason. It existed to liberate us. And when we even have the audacity to try to just measure basic things like decentralization, you get criticized for it. 
because at the end of the day, the people now in charge of the narrative, they know exactly where they're going and what they're doing. And you get the bill. So that, in a nutshell, is why we get hammered a lot. And that, in a nutshell, is why the dishonesty is starting to ratchet up, because there's legitimate fear in what we do with the centralized governance and the science process that we have. There really is. It's not easy anymore. They thought they could just write some books and kill Charles Hoskinson, and that would solve the Cardano problem. But now with decentralized governance, well, guess what? It doesn't because you've got millions of people all around the world that you can't write books about that are in charge, just like Satoshi. The difference between Bitcoin and Cardano, though, is Bitcoin can be controlled. It's easy to with proof of work and ETFs and exchanges, especially when all your Bitcoins in custodial wallets, whereas Cardano can't be because of the nature of the system, the on-chain governance, the proof of stake nature of consensus, how things are moving with Minotaur and partner chains. It's not possible. It's a very, very different animal, and it's much more terrifying. And no matter what happens, it's going to be here to stay. So it's uh, dismaying, but I figure I'd make a video and talk about it for a bit, you know, and uh, share my perspective on it. I've been in this space for more than a decade, 12 years now, and I've seen everything you could ever imagine, every scam you can imagine, every half-assed idea that you can imagine, a lot of good ideas. And I've seen a lot of good people who are very idealistic and come in and leave because they got ground up and thrown away. And as I look back at all of it, I don't want it to have meant nothing, or it just basically meant that we gave the banks more power, and all of this was just a more efficient way for them to rob us. I really don't want to see that happen. And it's getting uncomfortably close. It's getting un The dialogue is starting to move in that particular direction, and they're paying people off to do it because they make people believe that if they move in that direction, they'll become fabulously wealthy off of magic internet money. It will all go to 100x. 99% of you, if you think that everything's going to go 100x, 1,000x, 10,000x, will lose your money. You just can't time it. It's like winning the lottery. It's unpredictable. It's not egalitarian. That's the truth of the matter. It's the cold, hard truth of the matter. If you're here to build something, then you have to start with the principles and the why. In every single video I've made for more than a decade, you can go back to the beginning and see consistency in it. It was about the why. Why do we do what we do? Why do we build what we build? What are the design principles necessary to ensure that what we build is persistent, self-evolving, and always growing in the right direction. And every year we get a little closer to it. And lately we've been getting too close to it. And it's getting scary for certain people because if it gets too far along, you can't stop that organism. And I would argue we're past the point of no return as an ecosystem. So I guess Hydra is canceled. I guess Mithril's canceled. I guess partner chains are canceled. I guess Midnight is replacing Cardano, okay? I guess all the research labs are shutting down. I guess all the decentralized governance stuff, that's no longer relevant, not going to turn on. I guess all of you in the Cardano community are going to now leave and go somewhere else so you can get your 5X, 10X somewhere else and then dump and then go buy a Lambo or something. And then and then all the principles that you were raised on that you believe in, you, know, you don't believe in those things anymore. Against none of that is the case. Carnival Barkers. But maybe, just maybe, we're going to win. Maybe this was worth something, huh? Maybe we didn't waste our time. Maybe this is the fight of our generation. Every generation has one, and sometimes they're very explicit and kinetic. They're wars. And other ones, they have generations about culture, about meaning and purpose and human rights. The 21st century, the social contracts of the world are going to be renegotiated, whether we like it or not. And every single one of us has to have an opinion about how we ought to live in the future. Too much is changing too quickly. 
They got scientists working on designer babies in China. You got all kinds of wonders and horrors in synthetic biology occurring. AI is advancing at an uncomfortably exponential rate. You have nanomaterials that are wondrous and horrifying. You got robots and drones being mass manufactured that will start displacing tens of millions, eventually billions of jobs. And a thousand other things that are happening. Do you for a fucking moment think that the social contract of society is going to stay exactly the same? Capitalism is going to stay exactly the same. Our money systems are going to stay exactly the same. The way you vote and express yourself is going to stay exactly the same. Why do you think every crackpot dictator and fascist wants to restrict free speech and expression and tell you what to think, how to think, what's legitimate, what's normal, and what's not? They even use it the language now, normalizing. In other words, we decide what's normal. You don't get to do that. And anyone who opposes a conspiracy theorist or an anarchist or whatever pejorative label you put on, and who even comes up with these labels? Who gets to decide? It's not you. It's not me. It's somebody you've never met. And you can't vote out of power. And anytime you oppose them, you get the labels. That's the world we're moving towards, and it's going to be reinforced with algorithmic governance. AI is going to be in every aspect of your life, and you live in a panopticon. Every place you go, you're on camera. Everything you do is recorded. And you know what? CBDCs will come. This entire industry is a counter-revolution against what is coming. But all you care about is number fucking go up? You're going to sell your soul for 100 pieces of silver? That's what you're going to do? Then you tell me, how are you going to live well when all of your jobs have been taken by robots and cognitive agents? All the knowledge jobs are gone because I can pay five pennies an hour of electrical and compute cost to run something that did what you did in your job. How are you going to live well when you, when you go to the gas station to pump your gas into your car? It tells you you're not allowed to buy anymore because you've already gone over your allotment and now you have no fuel in your tank. And you're on hold on your phone to get an exemption and beg for permission to be able to drive your car home. How are you going to live well when everything you put in your body and all of your health care is completely decided by people you've never met and you have no say in the matter. And if you reject it, your ability to travel and your ability to get employed and interact in society is restricted. You don't believe me? What the fuck were these vaccine passports? That's the beginning of it, guys. It's here. It's being implemented real time in China. It's being implemented real time in Europe. And in the United States, they've been pushing it in various different contexts. And you know what? Every time you have a financial crisis, it allows us to move the window a little bit further ahead. Every time we have big war, it allows us to move the window just a little bit further ahead towards that type of reality, because that's how you control 8 billion people. And again, the point of crypto was an alternative governance model where we reduce the power of governments and corporations. We get rid of middlemen. And we put you in charge of your own life. What's the price of that and the value of that? Honestly, how much would you pay not to live in that dystopian world? It's like selling youth to a 90-year-old billionaire. They would give you every dollar in their bank account to be 20 years old again. Every single one. They'd go into debt for it because they understand the alternative. But you can't ask them at 20. You ask them at 90 because they live it. And if you live in that world, you'd give everything to go back to the old one, to dial it back. But you can't, because once you're there, you're the 90-year-old. You can't reverse it. So that is why there's real value in cryptocurrencies. That's why there's real value in what we say and do. You know, and I'm sorry, I'm tired of being lied to. I'm tired of the misintegrity. I'm tired of all of these things, year after year after year, I'm tired of being told it's going to get better next year. Let's just get past this election. 
Let's just get past this event. Let's just get past this. Let's just get past this. It never goes back to normal. Every time it happens, it gets worse. It doesn't get better. And you know what? We don't even punish the people who harm us anymore. We give them medals. We give them millions to billions of dollars. We give them retirement and honors. So we say, let's go build our own thing. You build your own thing, then you get labeled and attacked. Then you get told that all of the things that you do mean nothing. Because they're afraid that if you do succeed, they can't do what they do. This is the fight of our generation and our time. And I'd like to believe that the centralized governance, blockchain technology, high integrity processes, and fighting for the why every single day and reminding people of the why every single day of what we do, what we do, that's where the real value comes from. I want you to live your best life. I want everyone to live their best life. I want everybody to have freedom of association, commerce, and expression. I want people to be able to love the people that they love. I want people to be able to afford to live well and for their kids to live well. And I want for people to have what I had growing up, what my dad had growing up, my grandfather, and all the people that came before them, generation after generation. And I want us to have hope again. But we're not going to heal and have hope again by doubling down on the systems that created the hell that we're in right now. And we're not going to have hope again by trusting the same group of people that lie to us every single day. We're not saying that they all have to leave, that society has to somehow imprison all of them. All we're saying is give us a place to have the freedom to build these types of things. And instead, what they do is they say, you're not even allowed to do that. All your labor means nothing. You're in charge. You really are. And no matter how many times you're told you're not, you are. You're in charge of your life. You're in charge of your time. You're in charge of your mind. You're in charge of your voice. There are consequences to expressing yourself. There are consequences for believing in things and fighting for things. And the single most important thing you can do is decide where you want your life to go and the type of life you want to have and accept the fact that if you want to get there, there's going to be some pain along the way. But there's only two pains in life, the pain of regret or the pain of discipline. Projects like ours, you have to have a lot of discipline. Discipline to endure the criticism, discipline to endure the process, discipline to take every day, one day at a time, and keep pushing forward, and the discipline to accept that there's nothing instant about what you do, and then after you do it, people trivialize it, commoditize it, and say it's already been done, even though it actually hasn't been. And then you watch them try to, in the shadows, copy what you've done. In some cases, they pull it off. In many cases, they fail miserably. Or there's the pain of regret, where you didn't do it. You lived in fear. You stayed silent, tried to not bother anybody. And little by little, you watched all the things you love go away. A long time ago, I made a decision, regardless of the consequences, I'll take the first pain where it's going to go. I've had an amazing life. There's been a lot of ups. There's been a lot of downs. I can assure you of that. But I'm still here. I'm still relevant. We're still fighting. And this is why I do what I do. People often ask, why don't you just retire? Go live with your bison. There's no place in the world I'd rather be than here, right now, with all of you, in the arena, in the fight. Because I honestly believe that not only are we going to win, that after we win, forever, it's going to make everything better for everyone. Not perfect, but at least better. And then I can look back at life and say it was a life worthwhile. It was a life worth living. And we're so incredibly close to the next generation. And if you think the criticism is harsh now and the pain's harsh now, it's going to pivot a little bit. As we start winning and we start growing exponentially, which will happen, the criticism is going to go from people on Twitter and Reddit and Telegram to governments. We're already seeing it, who are terrified of the consequences of what we have. That's why decentralized governance is the most essential thing we can inculcate into the system. 
because it's the only way for systems like ours to defend themselves in the long term when they become inconvenient to those who have trillions of dollars in nuclear weapons. It's the only way. And it's the only way we're going to get what we want. To own your own bank, your own identity, to have your own self-sovereign identity, to be in charge of your voice, and to live in a world with fairness and integrity. It's the only way. That was the mission of Satoshi. That was the dream of it. We know it because he wrote it down. He followed the Paul Halmos method like we did. Told us what he was going to do, did it, and told us what he did. And then true to form, stepped out of the way and let the system take the next steps forward. So that's the magic of that process. And it really does get a lot done. I'm always an optimist. I believe our best days are ahead of us. And I believe that we will get where we need to go. And don't for a moment think it's going to be easy. And don't for a moment think that it's going to be fair. There are days that are a little harder than other days, and there are people that you thought that would, would want to walk the distance with you but chose not to. But that doesn't make it any less worthwhile when you get there, and the journey any less worthwhile. Everybody in the Cardano ecosystem, thank you. You get it. Deep down inside, you really do. And you've endured a lot. You've endured a lot of criticism. You're the ones who go to the VCs and have them shred your slide decks. You're the ones who go to the exchanges and be told they don't list Cardano native tokens. You're the ones who had to deal with a lot of difficult concepts and had to figure out a new programming model and new languages. You're the ones who had to get rejected and catalyst and go back second, third, fourth time to get funding. You're the ones who create a working group and then Nobody showed up or you didn't get the right support you needed. You're the ones who wrote a SIP and people ignored it. You're the ones every single day that are in the arena with us, taking the hits, taking the pain. And you don't give up too. Because deep down inside, you too know what's at stake. And you too know why we do what we do as an ecosystem. And there will be a day when that stuff doesn't happen anymore. There will be a day when we win and it gets a lot easier. But then we have to face the next struggle and the next challenges, just like all those other people in those other ecosystems do. But the difference is we're ready for it because we have true grit. We already got the rejections out of the way. We already took the hits. We already lived a life of scarcity and asceticism. And we already figured out how to live within our means as an ecosystem and get things done. And we didn't have the garish opulence that these other systems have. That is what makes the difference. And that's what makes us special. So thank you for being part of this. And thank you for walking the path. It's going to be good. It's just going to take some time.